What is up, guys? It is Joe. I'm back. We're talking about the cats. We're talking about the portal, but honestly, this one's going to be a little bit more exciting. We're talking about some visits here, not just the who would fit well in Manhattan, who have we reached out to. We've got some big news to talk about here in today's video, but before I do get into it, let me tell you this. First things first, I'm on the road. That's why it's a different background. That's why it's a closet behind me instead of the usual setup. But either way, the news was too big. Had to drop back in and make a video discussing my thoughts. Also, if you like K-State athletics, K-State basketball, K-State football, be sure and consider subscribing because it does help me out immensely. And you'll have more access to K-State videos on your feed. Also, another incentive to subscribe. If you're interested, I am giving away a lavender quarter zip at 2,000 subs once we cross that threshold. We just passed 1,700 the other day I saw. So we're getting close. Once we get within 100, I'll release the giveaway details on that. We did the same thing at 1,000, and we'll do it again at 2. Just kind of a cool way that I can give back to you guys for helping me grow the channel and continue to support. So, with all that being said, let's get into today's topic. Now, first things first, there is a guy in Manhattan, Kansas, touring K-State. Terrace Reed, a name that might sound familiar, he's got some links to Kansas City, obviously came out of St. Louis, Missouri, played for a couple, uh, one of the members of K-State's coaching staff, Rodney Perry, both on the AAU circuit and at Link Academy. He's a stud, he's a big dude, he's a beast, and I am thrilled to talk about him. We actually had a video a while back, I think it was an all-bigs episode, or it was one of the first videos this offseason portal talking about Terrace Reed Jr. when he entered, because there were some ideas that he might be linked to K-State. Sure enough, those people who are a lot smarter than I am were correct. Terrace Reed is in Manhattan this weekend. I believe he got there on Friday, and I'm not sure if he's staying the whole weekend, if he's staying a day, if he's doing other stuff. But from what I understand, he'll be there checking out the campus, getting to know the coaching staff, and seeing if that's a good fit for him. But let's talk about him specifically. I'm going to go a little bit more in depth than I did the last video. I can't remember all of what I said, but just to be safe, I refreshed and kind of reloaded my thoughts on Terrace Reed. I've got my thoughts pulled up over here, so if you see me looking off, that is why. Well, let's start off here. So Terrace Reed averaged 9 points and 7.2 rebounds per game at Michigan last season. And I know there's going to be the people that are like, Michigan was dreadful at basketball last year, so is it a good fit? I wouldn't worry too much about last year's team. It's not really a thing based off of, well, they didn't do great at Michigan as a team, so would he be a good fit here? You don't really chalk that up to anything. I mean, guys can have a complete switch in terms of competitive play. So that being said, Terrace Reed was one of the lone bright spots on Michigan before they fired Juwan Howard. He shot 51.9% from the field. And just my own thoughts on it, he's a sophomore, so he's got time to grow, he's got time to develop. He did play for Rodney Perry, both at Mocan Elite, I believe, and Link Academy in 2021-22. So he's got ties to K-State's coaching staff, he's been with Rodney Perry before. And that connection is at some point going to start paying dividends for us. I think this could be the, this could be the moment, but obviously, K-State seems to be doing a really good job of contacting people in the portal, getting interest in people, getting him to Manhattan. I think there's going to be some more visits we'll talk about here soon. Uh, but as it sits right now, you've got Terrace Reed on campus, and this is a dude you want. I know there was some backlash talking about how, well, maybe the kid's not an athlete. He's 6'10", 265. Guys, that's a laughable take. I'll give you the, the numbers that back it up, but as well as my personal opinion. So coming out of high school, he was listed as the nation's 35th ranked player. That's a top 35 dude in the entire class. He's the 8th ranked center in his class and the 3rd best player in the state of Missouri, or 3rd ranked player in the state of Missouri, I should say. The idea that he's not a splash does not make sense. I mean, a lot of people are like, but we need a top 10 player for it to be considered a splash. Not at all. And I, I want us to get top 10 players, don't get me wrong, but he's the 23rd ranked player in the transfer portal right now, and he's got national interest from massive brands. The kid can shoot, he can rebound, he can defend. He's a good post-up player, but he also has the ability to shoot from three, from you know the mid-post, high post, whatever the case is. He's got a nice-looking shot motion, and that's you know been there for a couple of years now. He didn't just click into place, or he had a hot streak or anything like that. Some stuff that I really love about him, and this is something that uh, I don't know if it's been talked about a ton yet, but... Looking back at his performance at the Peach Jam uh, tournament, I forget what the exact specifics are, but the dude dominated Peach Jam. He looked really good and was a, not a surprise, but he was a guy that really kind of turned heads and said, okay, this kid's going to be really good at Michigan. Obviously, Michigan hired just one of the worst coaches possible, and that doesn't really help grow players, but you like the idea that he's a sophomore. He's already one of the best rebounders in the Big Ten. Uh, he was both top 10 in offensive rebounding and defensive rebounding with the Wolverines, and that's something you love at K-State. One thing that I actually really like the idea of, because similar to how I mentioned in the C.J. Jones video, uh, there's kind of an interesting fit here. I like the idea of recruiting a couple of different guys that are on the, on the low block. I'm a big Jarrell Colbert guy at the same time. What I've heard some people talk about on Twitter, I don't know, you know, it's Twitter. We could know nothing. We could know everything. It is what it is. There's been a lot of people talking about K-State's idea of moving more to a two-big set rather than having the four and one out. Still running the five-out offense. I don't want to put any, you know, false images in your mind. But it'd be the idea of running David Gasson on the court with 
Terrace Reed. It'd be the idea of running Jarrell Colbert on the court with Terrace Reed, vice versa, having multiple big bodies that can rebound. Because pound for pound, we weren't a great rebounding team outside of guys like David Gasson and Arthur Kaluma, and that's just the truth. Terrace Reed gives you a guy that can do that. If you land him as one of your four open spots, and I honestly have some thoughts that maybe other guys on the roster might consider jumping in. If you bring in a couple more guards, if you bring in a couple more bigs, there's always that question to be had. And we still don't know the status of Arthur Kaluma officially. All in all, I think this would be an incredible ad. I know that people haven't been like the most like, well, this isn't such a great ad. This isn't guys, he averaged 10 and 7 at Michigan. I mean, this is a massive school. It's a Big Ten university. I know that's not the Big 12, we're Big 12 fans, but the dude is legit. He's a great scorer. He's got connections to Kansas State. The St. Louis ties are nice as well. I think he'd be a great ad. And one of your four roster spots, you get a dude that's ranked 23rd in the portal already. I mean, this staff is cooking. Top 20 player, top 25 player in the portal. Coming out of high school, he's got top 35 talent. And I know that high school rankings aren't everything, but I am all in on Terrace Reed. And I think you guys should be too. You think about it, Reed adds to the rotation. You got David Gasson out there. You got Jarrell Colbert out there. Obviously, Arthur Kaluma is uh, more of a four, but you've got a couple of different guys that are in that room. As wings, as centers, this dude is a massive player. He'd be a great player, especially like you lose Will McNair. This is a player that is a sizable upgrade from Will McNair. And I don't want to say that like he's a Will McNair clone or anything like that because there's some discourse about that. The dude is night and day different. He's a better athlete. He's a better player. And I think he would be a hell of a get at Kansas State. Now, the second dude I want to talk about real quick. I think I covered all my bases with Terrace Reed. I think he'd be a great fit. But let's jump into the second guy. And this is something that it's not a visit situation from what I understand. From what I know, it's not you know anything, but it could be something. Basically, when all these people enter the portal, there's all the different reports of these are the list of teams that this player has heard from. There's 10, 15 teams. Usually there's power five universities or, or power universities, five guys from the Big 12 Conference. There's different teams across the nation reaching out. Some recruiting battles get in, some you don't because you see the names on the list and you're like, well, we're not winning that one. Unless we have some specific tie, we're not getting to that. One player that I thought was a lock for West Virginia, Drake transfer guard Kevin Overton. He's a freshman, a 6'5 freshman, I should add, who is a lefty. He's a talented player. His game is smooth. And I really thought he'd be a lock to follow his head coach to West Virginia. Obviously, Drake's head coach goes to West Virginia this season, and I kind of figured that three-fourths of that roster will be going to West Virginia. It'll be the Drake Bulldogs in Morgantown, essentially, to an extent. Kevin Overton, I don't think, is leaning that way. And because of this, I want to give a shout-out to my guy, Irrational. I think he posted on Twitter. He was in the mix for the Kevin Overton, Overton conversation and basically looked through the kid's likes, and the only thing that he'd liked relative to anything outside of people announcing that he's going to the portal is someone responded to the original portal post with a gif of Jerome Tang throwing up the cats, and Kevin Overton liked it. And I'm not saying that's something, I'm not saying that's anything, but dudes don't really accidentally like things and just kind of move on from it. There's a connection there. The staff is pursuing Kevin Overton, and I think he'd be an incredible ad for reference because I know you guys uh, like to have some visual aids as well. Kevin Overton averaged 11.3 points, 3-point rebounds, 1.1 assists at Drake last season. He shot 34%, 34.6% from three. Don't panic yet. I'll explain that here in a sec. He is a lefty. He's from Oklahoma City. And another thing that's kind of cool, not only does he the kid have NCAA tournament experience, but he's another brick in the foundation of the Sunrise Christian Pipeline to Kansas State. Played at Sunrise Christian in high school, and he's a really great player. Currently in the portal, he's listed as the 63rd best player as a four-star prospect uh, available in the transfer portal. He's the 15th ranked shooting guard available. For reference, Cam Carter was listed as the 60th best player in the portal, and uh, Kevin Overton as a freshman is listed at the 63rd. I'm not saying it's an end-all, be-all metric. There's some flaws there, uh, you know, in terms of which player is the top player, which player is the 63rd player, whatever the case is. But if Cam Carter, as a going into his... Uh, senior season is going to be the 60th player. He's had four years of college basketball already to develop and a Drake kids at 63rd. It should explain some different things of like, okay, the youth isn't necessarily prioritizing the portal, but the idea that he can develop into a top level score. I mean, he's already the 63rd best player in the portal, 15th best scoring guard or shooting guard. Excuse me. I think that speaks volumes. Kevin Overton would be an awesome addition. The reason his shooting percentage is low. I mean, it's similar to Tyler Perry in the sense that the guy just shot a ton of threes. And it's not stupid shots. He's not just jacking up threes from half or anything, but he's got a really, really good ability to shoot the basketball. And I know people look at 35% and you're like, well, you'd like that to be 38, 39, 40. Yeah, I mean, we'd all like that. But the kid can absolutely knock down threes. He'd be a great addition. I don't know what the interest is going to come around as far as the staff goes, but you would add another impact player. And like I said about Terrace Reed Jr., if two of your four spots are used on the 23rd ranked player in the portal and the 63rd ranked player in the portal, those are massive. And my last caveat to all this, because I, I would really like the addition of Overton, but I'm also not going to, you know, get overly attached and then watch him go somewhere else and be really bummed about it. I think the idea that, oh my gosh, K-State's allocating resources to this. Like, if they have a shooting guard pop-up that's 
what, I mean, 19th best in the portal that's interested in them or whatever the case is. You know, I know there's some some storm about uh, the point guard, uh, Doug McDaniel from Michigan. Like, they're not going to stop having those conversations to keep having these conversations. Don't look at it as, okay, you're recruiting Terrace Reed. You can't talk to any other center in the portal. You're recruiting Kevin Overton. You have to commit to that guy. You can't have vice versa. You know, it's just not the way the college athletics works anymore. And obviously the staff knows what they're doing. I'll be honest. They know what they're doing. They know how to recruit. And I think you'll see a lot of visits before the deadline uh, or the the dead period here. I think it starts on the 3rd of of April, excuse me, maybe the 4th. I can't remember off the top of my head. But I do like Overton. I love Reed. I think both players would be really, really great additions. And you still keep yourself with at least two more scholarships available for the next wave of guys. You recruit these dudes. You get them there. Those are two really, really great players. You can make the dude argument for both, and I think that is valid. But I'm excited to see, and I just wanted to kind of update you guys on what's happening. Uh, Pay attention to Reed the next couple of days. I don't know if it'll be a situation where he comes to Manhattan and immediately commits, but also that's semi-common for guys in the portal nowadays. It's not always the case. You know, some people tour and they're like, yeah, it's not for me, whatever the case is. But I do have a hard time seeing Terrace Reed, or imagining Terrace Reed going elsewhere when you're kind of a a Midwest guy as is at St. Louis. You've got Buddy Rich from St. Louis on the team. You've got connections to the coaching staff. And it's a team ready to focus in the best basketball conference in America. That's a tough thing to uh, to shy away from. Plus, you get a revamped NIL collective. And I want to say this. Thank you guys all for supporting the uh, Wildcat NIL kind of initiative we've banged home about the uh, the 500 donors. We're not there yet, but we are dang close. So be sure and consider donating to Wildcat NIL. It takes as much as 10 bucks a month. You know, that's a cup of coffee. That's a Chipotle uh, burrito bowl. That's whatever you do. Um, and it does help us out immediately. So, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I just wanted to update you and give you my thoughts about both players. There's going to be more There's going to be more videos. There's going to be a busy week, I imagine, leading up to that dead window. And we'll talk to you here soon. But I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I appreciate you listening. Go Cats!